Hey guys, Fetz here from 11 Bravo Gaming with another commentary for you. I want to do something fun in this video. This is actually a really long video of Corrupt playing a defensive round on scene crossing. And it's so long that I'm going to actually break it up into three different parts. Uh, three different videos. And in each video I'm going to break down his gameplay and provide some tactics and feedback on that because it's something I've never done. And at the same time, we're going to discuss a topic separate from the footage. Uh, there may be some examples in the footage that roll into it, but for the most part, it's uh, not going to be dependent on the footage. That topic is player roles in Battlefield. Um, kind of player roles in shooters, but we're going to talk about Battlefield and how it applies to that. And a lot of my background in this actually starts in Call of Duty. So before I got heavy in the Battlefield um, Bad Company 2 and then Battlefield 3 I played a lot of Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 2 was the one that I loved and in that we played a lot of Capture the Flag which I just loved because you could play it at somewhat of a competitive level even though we were just playing public matches and we we played a little bit of game battles but not not really anything to speak of um, but we uh, we would play that very competitively with a six-man squad and just have a lot of fun doing it. So a lot of the background is going to come from that. Um, talking about Krupp's gameplay here real quick again. Uh, he's doing something where he's just having fun here, but it's very effective. He's C4 bombing out of this third floor. And this is an incredibly effective tactic because one of the best ways in is through this front door. Actually, it's not the best way, but it seems to be a very common way. In addition to that, you can see he's got so many areas of fire to shoot down at the enemy and look at the cover he has here he is uh, in about as good a head glitch as you can get in Battlefield 3 he's shooting that guy who's wide out in the open exposed and has no chance of winning that gunfight that's a guaranteed win for corrupt um, so that's a good thing he can get a lot of shots he can shoot down this alley here and uh, he can see four bomb guys trying to come through the front door the way you counter this uh, most effectively would be to drop some M320s up here. Um, he falls, I believe incidentally, but the 320 takes him out. And the other team is very smart. They actually start peppering this with 320s. And it kind of forces him to change tactics, which um, works out to be a good thing. While he's got the C4 kit on, he does take care of this APC here, which can uh, cause you a lot of headaches as a defender. So that was a really good move to get rid of that. I fully support the suicide there. Some people look down on doing that. They think uh, it's more noble to be able to escape and blow it up and live. He took out two players plus armor on a map where you don't get any armor. To me, that is a win all the way around. And that's a, that's a great tactic. So he switches to Claymore. So that's where his tactics adapt here. I like the switch. I don't like that he's running with the Claymores. He needs to run with his rifle out. And he needs to pull the Claymores out when he's ready to use them. You'll see that catch up with him later on in the gameplay, actually. However, if you watch closely, he gets a shitload of kills with these Claymores. Um, I really like what he did there. Did you see him pull his gun up ADS before running down that hallway? Uh, that was really smart. He knew there were going to be players approaching from there, and he prepared to win that gunfight instead of rushing down the tunnel and then waiting to see someone and pulling his gun up. Right there, what did you just see? Running with the Claymore, and it got him in trouble. He didn't die, but he didn't get the kill he needed to, and I think there's some more of that to come that you'll see. So definitely don't run with your Claymores out. Um, that is a big takeaway. So we want to talk also in this video about player positions. Uh, to me, there are three player positions that I focus on coming back to Call of Duty and, and playing Capture the Flag. Um, it's a lot more simplified in Call of Duty, but it still applies a lot to Battlefield. So we have the Slayer, which is your person charged with getting a lot of kills. This is one we're going to talk about in this video. We have your, um, your position player, your supportive player, and... Uh, your objective player you would call it in Battlefield and then I like to include uh, your leader which is um, a little bit different we're gonna talk about that one last we're gonna talk about Slayer in this one <clears throat> move on to objective player and then in the third video we'll talk about the leader position and the Slayer Krupp plays this all the time ironically in the footage that you're watching that's not really what he's doing he started out as that uh, at the beginning of the video with the C4 bombing and rushing the APC with the C4 now he's converted uh, to this objective player. 
So he's putting claymores down in the access ways. He's posted up near the objective, and he's watching a lane. Your Slayer's going to do kind of the opposite of that. Uh, the Slayer's job is to get kills and disrupt the enemy team at all costs. Your Slayer is probably going to run something like an assault kit on a map like this. Even though he can't take down armor with it, he doesn't care about armor. He's not objective oriented. His objective would be to kill the enemy team and disrupt them. Uh, he's not going to be near the base, near the MCOM necessarily, unless that's where he can get the most kills and do the most damage. Generally, he's going to be pushing flanks. He's going to be running around with a silencer. Now, I say that, but he doesn't have to be using a silencer. Your job, if you're going to play the Slayer role, is to literally use whatever you kill the best with. So if you have a setup that you're really good with, that's what you run, even if it's not suppressed, because it doesn't actually matter if you're suppressed or not. It matters that you can kill the enemy effectively. Uh, you do have to adapt. There may be times where a slayer needs to become more of an objective player. And your best objective players are good slayers. Uh, but generally, you're going to see a slayer who's not where corrupt is right now. He's going to be pushing that other side. He's going to He's going to be looking to push up where the enemy's not expecting and then to get that back rage in. And back rage means where you come up from behind the enemy where they're really not expecting it. You know, they assume there's no way that you're there. And you get to shoot a bunch of guys in the back and it's fantastic and you get a ton of kills. Uh, you're not necessarily sitting there guarding the MCOM, but you're playing a very effective, important role for your team. So, uh, shut up, phone. <laughs> I think that's a... A pretty important uh, part of the Slayer position. It's not very complex. It's difficult to teach. It's something that you kind of become good at from experience. You learn where the flanks are, where the weaknesses are. You have to be a good, accurate shooter. This comes into play a lot more on like console, where the sticks are harder to use, than on PC, where, where aiming is real natural. I'm not starting to debate on that. But on console, there's a really big gap of, of people with good aim and people with pretty shitty aim. Uh, so you do need good aim to play a Slayer position, but map knowledge is equally important. Uh, going back to the gameplay here, I love all the Claymore kills. He got really lucky with these, and if you watch a lot of times, and I love again the ADS before he went down to replace the Claymore. But look at the mini-map. His Claymores are the only thing behind him. And he sits here posted up, ADS down uh, this front access way, and he's getting Claymore kills. But... There's literally no one behind him. If the enemy had been smarter and like crouch walked past a claymore after the tenth time they'd died from him, they would have just knifed him right in the back because he really wasn't turning around that often to check on what was behind him. Not that he should have because he's one person and there's three ways in. And there's only so much that he can do. But uh, he he, he kind of got a little bit fixated, I would say. That would be a criticism. I would I would levy against the gameplay. A lot of fixation on what he was shooting at down, down the front there and waiting for kills. Uh, so that would be a takeaway, um, something that could be improved. Otherwise, really good gameplay and a really effective use of the Claymores. Um, I like where he falls back to here a lot when he's guarding those back doors. Uh, we kind of missed it, but he was you know going back into that little garage... And he's safe from mortars there, which are really common on this map. And he's safe from the LAV. At this point, he's ho uh, helpless against the LAV. He switched to claymores. He can't see for it. He doesn't have any RPGs, obviously. So he's got to rely on his teammates to take care of the LAV. He has turned into a pure objective player. He's sitting here with claymores guarding the bomb. The LAV can't plant the bomb on this map. So he knows that. And he's totally shifted away from any kind of Slayer role. And uh, he'll actually... In the second video, do a lot more of the Slayer role, but we'll talk about the support role. So here's where I'm talking about the tunnel vision a little bit. There's really not much go of anyone behind him watching his back. There's there's one player on the map facing the same direction he is. That drives me nuts. There's no reason for both of them to be watching this door. It's actually a squad mate, and now I look at the squad mate list, and he knows all these guys, and they're all in a party together. Uh, so whoever that is laying behind him, shooting down this lane... Uh, shouldn't be. They should be turning around watching one of those back doors, and that may be boring, but that's what they need to be doing here, and it would probably help quite a bit. Uh, otherwise, a pretty effective use of you know lane control. This map is a really good map to help teach or explain lane control on. 
because it, it like defines the lane so perfectly for you. So you got the front lane here, and you got the two doors in the back they can come in. The enemy team spends a lot of time up above where Krupp was just looking. They get up those steps. He actually missed a call out on a guy going up there. I know you're not hearing the audio, but I listened to it. That shot there, I don't see the guy when I watch it. I don't know how he saw that guy. Uh, he got hits, and then the Claymore went off. I'm not sure if he shot the Claymore. That's a really good example of an instinctual kill. There's an example of running with your Claymore out when you shouldn't have. And that was uh, that got him killed. So there, there's where it came back to bite him. And uh, I know it was kind of like he, he went to put the Claymore down uh, at the last second, but he should have waited as long as he could there. That, that was tough, tough situation because that guy timed it really well, incidentally. Uh, here's just an unlucky spawn where the guy is already about to shoot his squad mate that he spawned on. Uh, so... I think that was huge. Now, there's a crucial thing coming up. It's actually not something to crap does. See, this is Johnny B is the only guy alive. He rushes the MCOM that's planted solo. If he had paused in a secure place and let the other three guys spawn on him, they probably would have disarmed that, and that would have been a total game changer. Uh, so that was a definite failure there. I, I think that is something you could definitely learn from. Wait for your squad mates to spawn. I like how Corrupt bypasses all the distractions and goes straight for that MCOM, knowing that that's absolutely the only chance they had. It, that was a suicide rush. He probably didn't think he'd get it, but he was going to give it his best shot. But, you know, definitely take away from that uh, waiting on your squad mates to spawn. That's a huge thing in Battlefield 3, and it'll probably be just as important in Battlefield 4 to pay attention to what squad mates are live, which are down, and communicate that respawn. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. The second one will be out soon, and I think you'll like it uh, just as much, if not more. For 11 Bravo Gaming, this is Fetz, and I'm out.